I'm recording this video now. I'm ready in commentary position for the last day of the European Championships. But I thought let's take this opportunity to firstly highlight how well uh, or what a great chance that Emily Campbell has got in the women's supers today, but also to talk through a scoreboard with you. Now, I've got a computer screen, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. And the plan really is for me to go through and just give you as a lifter or as a coach an idea of how to time a warm up. So firstly, what I would encourage you to do is work out what weight you want to start on. Now, that starting weight needs to be ideally just below your best. You only get three attempts, that's not three attempts on each weight, that's three attempts in total on the snatch and the clean and jerk. So let's talk easy numbers here, let's, let's just keep, work with round numbers. So if we say your best is 100 and you are thinking that you know in training maybe you've been up to 95, maybe 97 and it's feeling okay, then you probably want to be looking somewhere around the 95, 97 mark as your starter. Now, depending on whether you are a competition lifter or a, uh, sorry, a platform lifter or a competition lifter or a training lifter, kind of depends on where that starting point would be. Some people can hit really big weights in training but struggle with the pressure in competition. I personally was the other way around. I could hit five kilos more in competition compared to what I'd done in training. So for me, if I could get to say 95, then I know I was good for that as a starting weight. Now, the starting weight really needs to be something that you are, I say comfortable with. Comfortable is maybe not the right word. It needs to be something that, that you feel you can be successful with. So not just the belief, but you need to have had the consistency in training to know that when you go on that bar, there's a really good chance that you're going to execute. At the same time, it needs to be heavy enough so that with your second and maybe third attempts, you can be pushing beyond anything that you've done before. So you need to be quite selective over what you think those attempts should be. But at the same time, I would encourage you to be a little open-minded uh, and to be able to respond to the competition and what, what goes on. If the person coaching you uh, says you need an extra kilo to what you've planned, then what we don't want is for that to be a psychological challenge and, and to get you out of your comfort zone or to panic uh, in the spur of the moment. So as a lifter, try to be adaptable to the situation and be prepared to maybe change the weight. So let's have a look now at uh, the process of going into a warm-up room. I would recommend that you're there a good half an hour before the competition starts and you do all of your loosening up, all of your stretching, any exercises that you want to do to prepare the body. Do that, get that done so that you can then chill out and relax a little bit. Depending on where you are in the competition will determine at what point you start warming up. If, for example, you are the first lifter on, you have the lightest weights in that group, then you need to be ready when the competition starts, which would mean planning your warm up uh, to, to build up so that you are just around starting weight just before that comp starts. Now, I'll talk you through how to do that and the kind of weight nominations that you would take. And remember, it's different for everybody. But there is a general rule that you can follow to make sure that you're prepared in time. On the flip side, if you're one of the later lifters on in the competition, which the example I'm going to use here, Emily Campbell, she's due to be last lifter out. I'm going to talk you through how she would be preparing and when she would start her warm up. What you don't want to do is start warming up too early and be ready and then have to wait 10, 15 minutes before you're called to the platform. That is not a good warm up. So I often see uh, less experienced lifters want to just get on the bar and warm up as soon as they get into the warm up room. That's not the way it's done. You need to make sure that your warm up is timed appropriately. So without further ado, let me share with you the screen that I've got here. So here it is. This is the competition. This is European Championships Women's Supers. And these girls are going to be going live in uh, just an hour or so. So we've referred to, and I'm going to try and use my pen here to illustrate, Emily Campbell. Um, and as you can see just here, Emily is number six on the board. And if we take a look, this is what the interesting thing would be here, the start weights that everybody's nominated. These weights, snatch and clean and jerk, these will have been nominated at the weigh-in a couple of hours before the competition begins. Now, as you can see, the numbers are all over the place. Some of the competitions here at this European Championships have been really close and therefore not much difference uh, in weights but in this case we've got a huge range going from uh, 85 kilos down here is the lightest nominated first attempt all the way to uh, Emily here at 114 so there's quite a big spread of numbers 
Now, let's take a look, for example, at this lifter here, Anna van Bellingen of Belgium. She's nominated, as we just said, an 85 starter. There's two lifters actually at 85. Um, so we'll, we'll, take, we'll take Anna, who's at the bottom. So according to this, you can see the highlight in yellow. That is the lifter that is due to be coming out first. Therefore, if you were coaching Anna, you would take a look at the scoreboard and you would work down and say, oh, look, there's nobody here starting lighter. We've got one lift up and then she's going to be on. Therefore, Anna would need to be ready just as the competition is about to start. Now let's go randomly to, um, let's go Dalalian at the top. Okay, so Dalalian, oh, where's my computer gone? Two seconds. Let me just bring that back up. Keeps doing that on me. So let's take Delalian here, who is at the top of the scoreboard from Armenia, has an opening weight of 95. So what we would do now is work down and see how many lifters are lighter and try and estimate approximately how many lifts there will be before this lifter is due to come out. So this lifter's coach will go, okay, there's one here at 90, but she might go up. This one's heavier, heavier, heavier. So we've got one here at 86. The chances are this lifter will have at least two, maybe three lifts before she's out so we've got three here plus that one four and we work down we've probably got four five six seven eight nine ten so Delalian's coach will be saying right there's roughly ten lifts before you're on therefore we're going to start warming up maybe ten minutes before the competition starts and when I say warming up I'm referring to actually time on the bar okay let's now flip to uh, Emily Campbell so Emily, as we can see here, is due to start on 114. And that is the heaviest nomination. So is there anybody else close to her? Yes, we've got one lifter from the Ukraine, Anastasia uh, Lysenko. She's due to be starting at 110. Now, because it's fairly close, this lifter may go up in weight. And Emily may go up in weight as well. But let's just assume for a minute that these are going to be the weights they start on. So those coaching Emily Campbell will now be looking at the scoreboard and saying, okay, there's probably going to be three, six, seven, eight, probably nine, 10, maybe 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 23 lifts potentially before Emily needs to be on the platform. Therefore, Emily, when we see her in a minute at the European Champs, she will probably just be chilling out, doing very little as the competition starts because she doesn't need to start warming up just yet. She can relax and, and probably will let maybe five or six, seven or eight lifts go in the, war, in, in the on the competition platform before she even goes onto the bar to start doing her snatch balances and then increasing the weight. So that's kind of how we look at a scoreboard and time a warm up. Now, the next thing you need to be considering, and I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper to illustrate this. So let me just open my book at a page that you can see. So let's just do some numbers here. Let's say your best lift is uh, 100 kilos. Ideally, training's been going well, and we think, you know what, we're good to start on 97. In an ideal world, that wants to be my starting weight. But I'm not going to tell the, the officials that of the way in, just in case warm-up doesn't go well. So I'm going to nominate 95, which will be the weight that then goes onto the computer. But in my mind, if it goes well, I'm going to be starting at 97. I'm then probably going to go 101 as a second attempt and an attempt at a personal best. Ideally, then, if it goes well, I'm going to go 103. Alternatively, I might be thinking... Let's go, I don't know, 96, 99, 101. So there are lots of different ways you can approach this, and it really depends on the individual, their level of uh, confidence going into the competition. But just for a minute, let's take this as the weights that we want to do. Let's say this lifter has actually hit 100 in training and they're feeling really, really good in great shape. Okay, so that's my first lift on the platform. Let's work backwards. I want to take 95 in warm-up as my last warm-up attempt. I'm then going to actually go 92 as the one before, and let's work backwards. I'm probably going to go 87 here, uh, maybe 82, 75, and then I'm going to go on those, um, let's go probably 60, 50, 40. So let's have a look. We've got here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sets warming up. That's about right. Um, Here's another way. So my best was 100. Let's, let's, this, these are the warm-ups I would have taken. 35, 
45, 55, 65, 75, 82, 87, uh, 90, I would have probably gone 93, uh, 95. So very similar. There's no set way of doing this. It's down to individual preference, but 35 would have been my first weight because I was using 15 bar. So all we need to do then is say, right, take one of these sets every two minutes and, and away you go. If, for example, there, let's say you've got nine sets here, you would wait for about 18 minutes. So nine times two, 18, 19, 18 minutes uh, before the competition starts if you're first lifter on. And if you're in Emily's case, you're going to wait until there's approximately 18 lifts left before you start that process. Reps and sets, I'd probably do a couple of sets of three here, set of three here, then drop it to doubles and then maybe singles all the way up so that I don't burn too much energy. But that is how uh, a coach would look to, to work out the timings on a scoreboard.